Julie watch. <laughs> Everyone. Well, I can't do it there. Got to come out here. Got to have a little space. According to you as well. <laughs> <laughs> and then a dip. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. Sunday is the first day of all the ones to follow. And we offer this hour. We have given you God, the first truth of all the people. This single hour in thanksgiving, a blessing lifted from our hearts to God. In trust, in honor, in response to the love we know. Our first hymn is hymn number 138, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. of trust and obedience. Let us seek to respond as we join together in the prayer of confession 
printed in the bulletin, which we will follow with a time of silent personal confession. Let us pray. Holy, Holy God, God, you draw us to yourself and fill us as we are. Even as we come on our hearts, our best thoughts, our highest souls, our hearts to hold and be polished to shine through you. Help us, Lord, who has our own good deeds to do your saving good that really makes us whole. The sacrifice of your Son, Jesus Christ, the one we call Savior. Transform our pride of doing into your response to the thanksgiving. Help us simply to receive the bounty of your grace and the soul. Prayer is an eternal prayer. not hold our sin against us or put us to shame. We have already received the mercy and forgiveness of God, which we earnestly and honestly seek. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. Jesus Christ, we have our freedom. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are the human beings that you are mind that they are more such care for them? Yet you have made them in a little lower than God, and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. All sheep and ox, oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. The New Testament reading is Romans 5, verses 1 through 5. It is on page 155 in the New Testament and page 188 in the Large Print Bible. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God, and not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, 
knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Here ends this reading. And we're still reading from the Gospel of John as we move past Easter and Pentecost, and one day we'll continue to move, I believe. But again today, we're in John chapter 16, and we're beginning with verse 12. Jesus, speaking to the disciples, said, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of Truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will speak, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. We thank God for the reading of this word. Whether it's Red and Trudy's or Sprague's or the beef and Olean, and whether or not you know exactly what you're going to order as you pick up their menu, do you still take a look at the daily specials just to see if there's something there you just got to try instead? Our steady diet of Bible passages that fill our worship hour each Sunday comes off the lectionary menu of weekly readings from the Bible. Presbyterians are known as being people of the Word. God's living word and God's written word, the Bible, that we read and we study and we base our worship upon. We, when we worship every Sunday, you will find three of the four texts we refer to in the bulletin that we speak them. We actively engage with them as we read together. The fourth text is listed as a meditative reading, offering you a side dish that you can choose to open and reflect upon. <coughs> it's an appetizer for your own private consumption. I see the sermon text as being the meat and potatoes entree of our readings, <coughs> in the sense that it takes a bit of preparation ahead of time to bring it to the table. The texts that our liturgist reads, they familiarize themselves with that reading and then they read it aloud and that becomes another side dish that adds to the depth of the meal. And then we all share in a psalm together, which is our dessert as we indulge ourselves in our scripture's most ancient meditations and thoughts about God expressed in the word of a psalmist who experienced their life in God's world in many ways just the same as we do now. Though separated by thousands of years from one another, the writer of Psalm 8 Right along with him, we too encounter those moments in our lives when we find God's deliberate intention to engage and create us. We find that mind-boggling, humbling. If you attended worship here last week, we were indulged. I pray we sated our spiritual hunger with all that we shared as we celebrated the Holy Spirit being a part of our lives, an integral part, 
one of those meat and potatoes entrees. And we began the service with an overfilling banquet as Diana engaged us. She got us on our feet. She brought us together to celebrate the spirit with an activity that produced this fiery ribbon halo filled with the rush of that Pentecost wind that swept through an ancient gathering of disciples in an event we claim as being the birthday of the church. Will we ever read that second chapter of Acts without the visual created in worship last week twirling around in our heads? From now on, all those words of that classic Red as the year passage will be caught up in a whirlwind of, of red ribbon and tossed high up into the vault of the sanctuary. God's living word will take flight right here in our midst or wherever we may be on Pentecost morning. The Spirit is welcomed here in our midst every time we gather. The Spirit is honored and celebrated and at home here, experienced in many ways as it reveals itself to us. We cannot be the people of God. We cannot begin to think of ourselves as being a church or the body of Christ gathered. We cannot do the work of Christ that we say we give ourselves to without the indwelling presence of the Spirit in our midst and in each one of our lives. And as naturally as that, we have found ourselves walking together down the pathway of this morning's worship as we celebrate another belief we hold as Christians, our belief in the Trinity, as we experience God in our lives as, as God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. This one God in three persons that we just lifted in song there in our first hymn. Each time we speak of God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit, as we are talking about our faith, we are bringing expression to the belief that, that we have in the Holy Trinity. One of the more elusive theological understandings that we hold about God. Pointing to our concept of the Trinity, Muslims say Christians believe not in the one God of all, as they and all Jewish people do, but that we believe in three gods. Other religions who do not believe, who believe in many gods, don't even raise an eyebrow over our Trinitarian belief, viewing we Christians as being fellow polytheists along with them. Hard as it is to explain to some that we hold fast to the ten to the first commandment along with them that there is only one God that we believe in. It's just as hard to move others to see the three in one ways that we experience our one God as not being a multiplicity of at least three gods that we worship. And we can honestly admit that for most of us, our belief in the Trinity is one we hold in these very human hands and minds of ours in faith. God our Creator, Christ our Redeemer, the Spirit our Sustainer. These are all expressions of the different ways that we relate to one God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. These are three distinct relationships existing within the one Godhead. God has been revealed to us through Christ, who walked among us. When Jesus left this earth to return to God, he sent the Holy Spirit to be with us, to be that living presence 
that connection between God and Christ, the spirit within to make that relational spiritual connection with God and with Christ, being the living reality that we know in our lives of faith. Christ called the Holy Spirit the Spirit of Truth. In conversations that he had with his disciples that we are reading here in our text. The Spirit will guide you, he said. The Spirit continues to teach us just as Jesus taught us when he was on this earth. The Spirit will speak what it hears, he said, just as Christ told the disciples what he heard from God. The Spirit will speak about things to come, Jesus said, not in the sense of predicting the future, but of things yet to come as future generations of his followers experienced the changing circumstances in their lives in a world that would be continually changing. The world that we live in is not the same as it was in Christ's day. Through the Spirit, we receive fresh proclamations of Jesus' words that speak directly to the events and the situations that we find ourselves in. Here on a, a day in the life of the church, we traditionally celebrate as Trinity Sunday. We begin reminiscing about last Sunday when we celebrated the Pentecost. Maybe I was stalled as I wrote avoiding the formidable task of weaving our lives and this life that we share together in with the concept of the Trinity simply and therefore more user-friendly to us all. What I know is that the Trinity comes and infuses, infuses itself into our lives and our situations all on its own. No deep discussions or invocations or loop alerts to its presence needed. As I wrote earlier, the Spirit is welcomed here in our midst every time we gather. The Spirit is honored and celebrated and at home here experienced in many ways as it reveals itself to us. We cannot be the people of God. We cannot begin to think of ourselves as being a church or the body of Christ together. We cannot do the work of Christ we say we give ourselves to without the indwelling presence of the Spirit in our midst and in each of our hearts. The Spirit, we as the people of God, we as the body of Christ doing the work of Christ, the Spirit indwelling. In that single paragraph, we have invoked our belief in God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit with absolutely no formal thought of the Trinity. May we say in this remembrance of, of last week's worship that the Trinity permeates our thinking as it helps us understand our lives of, of shared belief and practice. Can we see how the Trinity lets us experience in God this God that in ways we could never adequately portray. We try. It's a beginning. Could the concept of the Trinity be a bit less intimidating as we attempt to describe it? Could we relax and accept that Eternal spiritual presence is with us. And see the familiar faces of God more and more in the experiences we have. 
and be drawn by Christ into a life around us in healing and caring ways. As we are willing, dear friends, we will be able, through the God who hopes through us, and the Christ who loves us, and the Blessed Spirit who lives right here with us, through this Blessed Trinity, we walk and will be able to heal and care for this world. And in that, glorify the one God of all our hearts. Amen. Let's turn to our hymn number 139, Come Now, Almighty King. Experience that in their lives. 
We give you thanks for that. We give you thanks for praise for settling in. Thanks that Russ has recovered and is back among us. On Thanksgiving, oh Lord, as you raise our young ones up and they take those steps that, that we have taken at one time. And your hope rests in them as well. Bless our young people, oh Lord, as they continue on in their education, continue on in their, in their lives. And may they be a blessing to this world. And we lift the prayer of our heart for Peg and for Diana, for the whole family, as they have said goodbye today. We can give you thanks to God for his life among us and in this community and for all the lives that, that he touched. And may we see him in his glory with you. Home at last, dear Lord. We give all the choirs of heaven. Bless and keep that family and in this community, as, as we all say goodbye. We thank you for, for our children. We thank you for our neighbors, for the love and connection that, that we can make there. And we ask for your strength and your hope, for your keeping of our community and of our nation, our world, and all the dear people. Awaken within us, dear God, a sense of the community we are beyond these walls, beyond this this town, beyond where we work, beyond our country, we, this community out there that, that we just have a hard time fathoming, and yet you call us into it. And we ask that you continue to guide us and lead us and draw us where you would have us be. Guide us and lead us as, as we go into this week ahead. Bless Cal and Buffy as they, they go on their adventure and all those who go with them. And bless your love and your goodness flowing through our lives wherever we may be and in whatever we may do. And Lord, here in this last moment, we lift a little sixth grade girl into your arms and pray for your young to come to her and your strength to be with her family. We ask this all in the name of Christ, present with us and known to us through your Spirit. Joining our voices together in the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now let's uh, turn to our clothing hymn number 341, Blessed Assurance, uh, Jesus is, is mine.
praising, praising Christ, praising God, praising the Holy Spirit. May God bless you and keep you. May God make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may God lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Have a good week, everyone.